If you've ever been to a job orientation, I know that you know that they cover a lot of information in a very short amount of time. They cover things like what your responsibilities are as an employee, all the way to your vacation days and your sick days that you're allowed to take. But there is a very, very important part of the orientations that we want to focus on in this video. And that's the part revolving around the employer-sponsored retirement accounts. These accounts sound like a random assortment of letters and numbers. You may hear things like 401k, 403b, 401a. And I know when I first heard these during my orientation, it went in one ear and out the other. But these accounts are very, very vital to your financial independence journey because they could be used alone to set up a stable retirement. So in this video, we're gonna be giving you guys five important facts to know about your employer-sponsored retirement accounts. So stay tuned. Hi guys! I'm John. And I'm Cecine. Welcome to our channel, Millennial Fire, where we give practical tips on reaching financial independence and early retirement. And if you guys have been enjoying our content so far, please hit the like button. And if you haven't already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button because that really helps us out. So what are employer-sponsored retirement accounts? These are accounts that are sponsored by your employer in which you can contribute to and sometimes even your employer contributes to as well that have tax advantages. These tax advantages can come either in the form of tax deferment, meaning your tax liability is decreased now, you don't pay taxes on the money that you contribute and you don't have to pay taxes on them until you're ready to withdraw at a qualified age. Or it can be in a tax shelter form, meaning you pay taxes on the money that you contribute to it now, but when it grows and you're at an eligible age to withdraw from it, you no longer have to pay any taxes on that money. And both of these situations can be an advantage to you depending on what your financial situation is. So why are these accounts important? Pensions are very rarely offered nowadays, and so these accounts have become the new norm for planning for retirement. So now let's dive into these five facts that you need to know about your employee-sponsored retirement account. Fact number one is that there is a limit to what you can contribute to your employer-sponsored retirement account. The limit generally is the same, and that is $19,500 as of 2020. What differs is the amount that you can contribute over 19,500 once you've reached the age of 50. They allow you to have an additional contribution called a catch-up contribution. And we will have it provided in the link below the different amounts that you can contribute based on the different retirement account that you have. So fact number two is that your employer may match your contributions. So what does this mean? Let me give you a quick scenario. Let's imagine you opened a savings account at a bank and the bank told you for every time you put in $1,000, they'll give you $1,000 to add to your account. This is what an employer match is when it comes to your retirement accounts. So an employer may come to you and say, hey, if you put in $1,000 a year, into your 401k or 403b or whatever the account may be, we'll give you $1,000 or we'll give you $500. But if you don't put it in, we won't give it to you. So when you think of it like this, if you don't put in that $1,000 into your own account to receive that additional money from your employer, you're literally just giving up free money. That's why this is one of the most important facts to know because it's one of the easiest way to miss out on gains in your retirement accounts. So if you guys have an employer that offers a match, please, please, please take full advantage of that. There is a very important caveat with this fact, and that is something called vesting. This is something we recommend that all of you guys understand when you're taking advantage of these types of accounts. Vesting is when the money that your employer contributes becomes your money. So let's give you this example. An employer may say, hey, we'll contribute 100% up to 6% of your salary, and you'll be fully vested in four years. What that means is that if you get fired or you quit that job before that four years, or even laid off, or even laid off you won't get 100% of the money that the employer contributed. They want you to stay at the job as long as possible, so they use this as an incentive to get you to stay for at least four years. So during this time, there are typically vesting plans. So you may see something like this. You may see something that says, if you work for one year, you will be 25% vested, which means you get 25% of the money that the employer contributed. Two years, 50%, three years, 75%, and then on that fourth year, you can reach that 100%. 
So if you're taking advantage of these strategies, look at the vesting schedule for your employer because you don't want to leave your job early and leave that free money on the table. So we know we've been throwing quite a few terms at you guys, but we got to throw a few more because these two categories are very important to know. And that brings us to fact number three. There's a huge difference between a traditional account and a Roth account. When it comes to your retirement accounts that your job offers, yes, you have 401ks, 403bs, 401as, and all of those. But these accounts can fit into two other categories as well. And one is called traditional and the other one is called Roth. So the important thing to know about these two accounts is that traditional, your money is contributed before taxes are taken out. So before your paycheck takes out the taxes, this money is contributed to these traditional accounts and it grows. And once you withdraw that money in retirement age, that's when you pay taxes. Inversely, with the Roth accounts, your money is taxed first and then contributed to the account so this money is able to grow tax-free. And so when you get to retirement age and you meet all of the qualifications, you can withdraw this money with no taxes coming out. So when it comes to these two accounts, you won't always see the option of investing in a Roth retirement account. Not all employers provide those, but there are employers that do. So another important thing to keep in mind about these two accounts is that there are still contribution limits. As of 2020, the contribution limit for each of these accounts is still $19,500. If your employer provides both of these, you're able to contribute to both, but combined, those accounts can only have a contribution of $19,500. So if I contribute $19,000 to my Roth 401k, I can only then contribute $500 to my traditional 401k. Another important thing to know is where the match goes. So when you have a Roth retirement account, and you have an employer that provides contributions and matches, anything that they match is going to go to your traditional account because it hasn't been taxed yet. So even if I put my $19,500 all in my Roth 401k, for example, then my employer would match, but that match wouldn't go to my Roth 401k. It would go to a traditional 401k that's separate because you can't avoid paying taxes in this matter. So you've been contributing to your retirement account consistently. Your employer has been matching, and now you have a huge amount of cash in your retirement account. And now you want to figure out how can I access this cash? So this brings us to fact number four, which is that you may incur fees from withdrawing from your retirement account if it's an unqualified withdrawal. And in order to make a qualified withdrawal from your retirement account to avoid any penalties, you either have to be 59 and a half, and specifically if you have a Roth account, a Roth retirement account, then not only do you have to be 59 and a half, but that money has to be in the account for at least five years. So if you, for example, started a Roth 401k with your job at the age of 56, at 59 and a half, you would still have to wait another two years before you can make a qualified withdrawal from your Roth 401k. If it's a traditional 401k, then you don't have this issue. Once you get to 59 and a half, you can make withdrawals from it. Another way to prevent penalties from an employer sponsored retirement account is if you leave your job at the age of 55, if you either retire early at the age of 55, or if you are laid off or you get fired for some reason at the age of 55, it's good to know that you do have the option to withdraw from that particular employer's retirement account penalty free at that point. So we finally made it to fact number five and this is one of the most important. This fact is that your retirement account is the investment vehicle, not the investment itself. What does that mean? Well, when you're investing in a 401k or 403b or any of these employer sponsored retirement accounts that we've been mentioning, that's not the investment itself. It's the place where your investment lives. So technically it's kind of like a bank account. You can put money into this account and it may never grow if you're not in any investments. So within these employer sponsored retirement accounts, you can invest in index funds, mutual funds. You can invest in stocks, bonds, annuities. There are a lot of investment options. So we feel like it's very, very important for everyone to know where their money is invested. Typically your employer will automatically default you to the investment for the company. So the important thing to pay attention to is knowing how these accounts are growing and what the expense ratio for these accounts are. So when it comes to this, you're going to have to go and do some research, 
we could try to provide as much information as possible, but every single company is different. So we recommend that you call your company's HR department, ask them if you have an online access login to your retirement accounts, and start doing some research and look at these numbers. One of the most popular types of accounts that employers may automatically enroll you in are called target date funds. These are funds that automatically move and allocate based on your age. And while you're younger, they make more risky investments. And as you get older, the investments become more conservative. So this is actually something you can do on your own. And we wanted to take a minute to pause right here and say that we are not financial advisors or financial professionals. We just feel that you guys should have this knowledge and this information, but please, please, please don't make any investment decisions based solely on what we've said. Please do your due diligence. Please go talk to financial advisors so you can do what's best for you. So we believe that a lot of people may be able to receive more benefit by choosing their own investments. We've taken our target date funds that we were automatically set up with and routed them toward index funds. So the specific index funds that we love to invest in are S&P 500 index funds. So either with Fidelity, which is F-X-A-I-X, or with Vanguard, V-X-I-N-X. So we love these accounts because they encompass the entire S&P 500. For more information on how index funds work, please check out our index fund video, or of course, feel free to reach out to us. But we found that these investments have been more beneficial to us than the original target date funds that we had set up. And with that being said, it really depends on what your brokerage offers. So not every employer will have a brokerage that offers these funds as the best investment or the best mutual fund. Do your research, like he said, do your own due diligence. Mm -hmm. See what is the lowest expense ratio index fund that either covers the total stock market or the S&P 500. And that is probably gonna be the best investment for you. So with that being said, investing completely in the stock market may be considered quite risky. So if you feel that you're not at that point where you want to take that risk, a strategy that's really, really cool that we've learned from John Bogle and JL Collins is a strategy where you take your age. And so I'm 29 right now and I'll subtract my age from 100. That number that I receive, which would be 71, would be the amount of percentage of my investments that will be in a S&P 500 stock market investment. Then 29 would be the amount of money that I have invested in a total bond market index fund. And as I grow in age, that number moves. So by the time I reach 60, I would have 60% in bonds and 40% in stocks. And so this way, you kind of set up your own target date fund without paying all the additional fees that these traditional target date funds have. So guys, those are the five facts that we feel like is vital for you to know for your employer-sponsored retirement accounts and also for reaching financial independence. We know that we covered a lot and these were a lot of the basics. We're going to be going into more detail and more advanced techniques in later videos. But before we did that, we wanted you guys to understand the 101 of how these employer-sponsored retirement accounts worked. But of course, as usual, if you guys have any questions on anything we said or anything we didn't say, please feel free to leave a comment down below or reach out to us at our email and we'll be happy to answer any question we can. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button for us because it really helps us out. It helps get this video out to more people on YouTube. And if you want to know when we drop our next video, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so YouTube will notify you and shoot you an email every time we drop a video. If there's any videos you guys want to see, any topics you want to see covered, please leave it in the comments. Let us know and we'll be happy to cover them. We're just trying to reach financial independence and bring as many people as possible along on the journey with us. So until next time, see you guys. See ya.